Hello, I'm Peter van Hursten from the South African National Bioinformatics Institute, and welcome to the tutorial on Mycobacterium tuberculosis variant analysis. So Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the pathogen that causes TB, which until recently was the world's uh, top killer infectious disease in 2020. It got pushed aside by COVID-19, um, but still uh, we uh, think that more than a million, maybe a million and a half people worldwide died of tuberculosis uh, last year. The uh, M tuberculosis genome is a 4.4 megabase genome. Uh, in the tutorial, you can find out more information about it. And the typical reference strain that's used is something called H37RV. There, there is not a lot of variety within uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, genomics, and there is no recombination, but we can talk about that in the tutorial on mycobacterium tuberculosis genomics, which you can watch alongside this tutorial. So what is it that we are trying to achieve with mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, variant analysis? Uh, a couple of things that we're interested in. Firstly, which lineage of tuberculosis are we looking at? Because uh, this can be significant um, for research purposes in the future, and maybe in the future we will understand what these lineages mean in terms of clinical outcome. Secondly, what variants exist in the genome that are associated with drug resistance? Um, treatment of mycobacterium and tuberculosis is quite complex, and unfortunately, drug resistant tuberculosis is on the rise worldwide. And thirdly, the pattern of variants that we find within the genome can be used within outbreak investigation, where we try and find out which cases are connected to others. So let's get analyzing data. Uh, I'm going to get the data from the tutorial. I'm going to copy these links that are in the tutorial, and I'm going to uh, use galaxy.eu, where I've already created an empty history, and I've called this M tuberculosis sequence analysis. So then I click my upload, paste fetch data, and paste all of these, at which point Galaxy will start to load them for me. So Galaxy has finished processing our uploaded files. Uh, I want to first change some names. Just remove everything here to call the 00422 FASTQ.gz. And then do the same with this file. So this is read one and read two from 004-2. The data in these two files, FASTQ files, was collected from a Southern, Southern African TP patient in a study which was examining reinfection versus reactivation of a tuberculosis infection. First thing I want to do with these files is some quality control. So I'm going to use FastQC. So search for it in my toolbox here, FastQC. And I'm going to use the multiple uh, data set selection button. And I'm going to choose these two uh, files. And then I will click Execute. So while FastQC is busy running, I'm going to get ready with my multi-QC. What am I doing here? I want to not have two individual reports. I want to aggregate the data into a single graph. So here in multi-QC, I say multi, I say fast QC is my input. And then I want the raw data input. And I'm going to use control and click to select the raw data from those two files. And I can do that and Galaxy will put it in the waiting queue, waiting for my other data to process. Now my other data started processing. Once this fast QC is finished processing, multi QC will start. So now multi QC has finished running. So let's have a look. The eye icon here on the multi QC on data nine and seven web page. Give it a few seconds to load. 
and there it is. I'm going to move my sidebars to the side to give the multi QC window more space that I can look at it. I can move my sidebars using these little arrows in the bottom corners of the Galaxy interface. So what we see here, percentage GC is 66%. That is what we expect from a mycobacterium tuberculosis. Quite a lot of duplicate, probably PCR duplicates coming in here. Um, 5.3 million sequences. And let's look at the quality. And that is a pretty decent looking um, quality profile. We see here that the two uh, reads forward and reverse both have quality mostly above 30, just dipping here at the end. And then we look to see if the adapter content. Hmm, looks like there might be some sequencing adapters left in some of the sequences, but it's quite a low percentage overall. So uh, think about like how you would handle these sequences, but while you're thinking about that, let me bring my Galaxy interface back. And I'm going to move on to some quality trimming. Now there are many different quality trimming tools, but I'm going to use Trimomatic. It is one that I know fairly well, and I like it. So here's Trimomatic, and this is paired end sequencing. And there we put the pairs in. Notice that I'm handling these uh, sequence files as individual files. If you're dealing with a large amount of data, you're probably going to want to use a collection um, of uh, paired in data for this analysis. The average quality by default is 20. I'm going to bump that up to 30 because I saw the quality was quite good on those sequences. So I don't think I'll lose a lot by doing so. And then I'm going to add a second uh, operation, which is that if anything drops below 20 bases, we should discard it. And here, Trimomatic has started running. You see it will give me both the paired and unpaired reads. The unpaired reads are if it decides to discard a read from one of the files, uh, but not the other, then we'll have some unpaired reads left. Uh, but mostly we'll be paying attention to these R1 and R2 paired. And while Trimomatic is already running, I'm going to do another quality check. So I'm going to use a tool called Kraken 2. What Kraken 2 does is it tries to assign a taxonomic label to each sequence read. So I'm going to choose my paired sequences and I'm going to use the, the R1 paired and the R2 paired outputs from Trimomatic. This Kraken can run after uh, the traumatic has finished running. I want to use the scientific names. And then down here in the create report section, I want to print a report with aggregate counts. Okay. So what Kraken 2 is doing, I of course have to select, I want to use the standard database. Let's see. There's the most recent standard database, which is a database of essentially most of the sequences that you find in NCBI across different domains of life. And what Kraken 2 does is it tries to, in this report that we're going to see, give us some sense as to whether the species is predicted to be mycobacterium tuberculosis. I said earlier that mycobacterium tuberculosis doesn't have a huge amount of diversity within the species, so that makes sorting out specific different mycobacteria um, different, uh, uh, quite difficult. Um, I should have said it doesn't have a lot of diversity within the genus. There's more similarity than you might find in some other species. But uh, yeah, let's set this running. That will run after the traumatic. 
And Kraken 2 is quite a resource intensive process. So that will run for quite a while. If you want to skip this step and just work the tutorial faster, um, I will make a saved history of the tutorial available for you to download. So you can just see what the Kraken 2 output looks like. So at this point, Kraken 2 is busy running. Traumatic is run. There's not much to see here because uh, this is just fast few files. But if we have a look at them, we will see that the two paired end files, 257 megabytes each, if we compare that to the input files, you see there is some change in size. Uh, let me just go back to confirm that. And then at the unpaired is very small amount of um, reads in the unpaired section, but we see that there has been some trimming down of our data um, to get our trimmed fast queue. While Kraken 2 is still running, I'm going to go back to my original uploaded data and I'm going to change some names. So I'm going to just remove the prefix to this mycobacterium tuberculosis ancestral reference dot genbank. And do the same with the dot fasta file. Now, what is this file that I'm looking at? The, uh, as I mentioned previously, the standard reference genome for mycobacterium tuberculosis is uh, H37RV. Uh, so I'm going to do the same with this chromosome file. And H37RV belongs to lineage 4 tuberculosis. Uh, Inaki Komas and colleagues uh, worked with a diversity of mycobacterium tuberculosis genomes to infer what the ancestral reference genome should look like, uh, but only inserting single nucleotide um, substitutions. So the, in, uh, the an inferred ancestral reference genome is exactly the same size as H37RV. That means the annotation still works the same, but in terms of the sequence content, uh, it is more neutral when it comes to the um, sequence being closer to what we think the ancestor to all lineages of tuberculosis looked like. So it's quite useful for um, building phylogenies, especially because you're no longer getting bias from comparing your samples against a lineage for reference. So now Kraken has finished running. So let's have a look at the output files from Kraken. This is the classification of each individual read. Many, many millions of lines. And this is the report generated. So it starts here by saying, well, 95% of all reads could be classified as something. So there's only 4% so good unclassified that we down and we look down and we see that 94% are classified as um, mycobacterium. Mycobacterium tuberculosis itself, the complex can only uh, 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 counts for 14% of the reads, but that's because it's not able to unambiguously classify further down than mycobacterium. But that does suggest that we are looking at a mycobacterium tuberculosis sample without significant contamination. So now that we've finished with our quality control work, we can map these reads against the mycobacterium tuberculosis genome. And for that, we're going to use a tool called SNPI. SNPI is uh, essentially a pipeline written in Perl by Torsten Seaman that does mapping some cleaning up of the mapping and then uh, variant calling. It does mapping with BWA and BWMM and it does variant calling with Freebase. So let's look at the options. We're going to use a genome from the history and build the index. Now here I'm going to choose 
the GenBank file because if I use a GenBank file, Snippy will generate a VCF that also has information about which genes the variants uh, were found in. And I'm going to use the R1 and R2 paired reads. Then in the advanced parameters, I'm just going to drop this down to 0 0.1. So normally it's 0 0.9, in other words, finding a variance only if 90% of the reads agree, I'm going to say 0 0.1 to see even rare variants. And finally, I want the VCF format. Uh, I want a tab separated summary of all variants. I want the alignment in BAM format. And I'm not interested in snippy core because I'm not analyzing multiple samples at this point. Just checking my tutorial. Uh, and those three outputs are the only ones that I care about. Then I hit execute and the mapping will now commence. Mapping and variant calling. So now that uh, Snippy has finished running, that should take about 20 minutes. You can see what our output looks like. Okay, this is the alignments in BAM format. Then we have VCF format. We see here various variants. And because of how we used a GenBank uh, reference, then uh, we can see that the variants annotated in terms of uh, their location on the genome and what genes are happening in that region. So let's have a look. 1087 lines in this tabular format output. And this means that we basically got 1,086 um, variants, um, all different types, SNPs, deletions, and so on. Um, and this is what we should expect from a, a typical mycobacterium tuberculosis sample. We have approximately in the range of uh, between some hundreds and um, Max, maximum maybe 2,000 variants compared to the reference genome. So we've done various steps of quality control to get to this point. We've looked at the sequence quality with uh, fast QC and um, multi QC. Uh, we've checked for contamination with Kraken 2. Um, and internally, Snippy does its own quality controls um, to make sure that we uh, get good alignments uh, specifically uh, you might have noticed in the advanced parameters section there was a parameter for minimum mapping quality which is used internally by snippy to ensure that we have good quality alignments coming out and then finally we've used the inferred ancestral reference genome which as i described earlier has some advantages for variant calling in mycobacterium tuberculosis. So one of the challenges with mycobacterium tuberculosis is that the genome has some repetitive regions, um, insertion sequence sites, and also the PE, PPE, PGRS gene family. So there is a tool specifically for filtering out these problematic regions and just doing in general um, VCF filtering for M tuberculosis. Um, and it's called TB variant filter, and I found it now. And we're going to run it on the VCF file. And let's see which uh, filter should we use. The So filter out variants by region. So that looks, if we just look at the options available here, the default regions that are filtered out are the PE, PPE regions. And the tool UVP has a useful uh, list of repeats and insertion sequence sites. So those regions are also filtered out. And then some other photos we might want to use uh, is remove variants close to indels. Uh, it's still being debated whether this is still necessary, but uh, in general, when an indel happens, then alignment around it, a few bases around it, 
um, and by default, uh, that is five bases, um, can get a bit uncertain. So then there could be false um, uh, variants uh, around Indel. So that's why that false is there. And uh, then uh, very commonly used filters, filter size by alignment depth. So the default here is a minimum read depth of 30. We want at least 30 reads supporting each um, variant. I'm not going to change any of the default options for the specific filters, just use those. Uh, just use those filters as they are. Okay, TV variant filter is busy running. So now let's do something else in parallel. TB Profiler is a tool to uh, infer drug resistance from a mycobacterium tuberculosis um, sequence data. And it can take input straight from the Illumina sequences, um, or you can feed it the aligned BAM, which we uh, Snippy already produced an aligned BAM. Um, and it can either output in text or PDF. And just checking the minimum allele frequency is 0 0.1, which is the uh, same frequency that I was using in Snippy uh, for its uh, variant calling. And let's hit go. So this uh, takes the output from Snippy and it's running in parallel with TB variant filter. It, uh, is not using the output for TB variant photo. You can run it on BCS, but because it has its own variant calling, uh, I prefer to run it um, on the BAM. Uh, uh, when you are using an aligned BAM for a TB profiler, then it is uh, useful to keep the, um, to, well, it's not useful, it's necessary to use a, a alignment against the 837 RV chromosome so that uh, uh, TB profiler is able to understand the variance in terms of the coordinate scheme of H37RV. TB profiler has now finished running. Um, this run took only a few minutes for me. Um, and what does it give us? So TB profiler gives us output in uh, JSON format, which is a format that is designed for kind of computer programs to read. It does its own VCF calling, but this is only focusing on regions that it considers of interest for drug resistance. So you see it's only 43 lines, quite a bit smaller than the VCF from SNPI uh, or TB uh, filter and uh, TB variant filter. And then uh, it produces a report. So let's have a look at its report. This report can be in PDF, this one is in text, text format. Firstly, it tells us what lineage we're looking at. So this is a lineage for the so-called Euro-American lineage, um, tuberculosis sample that we're looking at. Despite the name, Euro-American lineage is uh, common worldwide, at least in part due to uh, colonialism, spread of Europeans around the world. Uh, it gives us a predicted spoligotype and then uh, it talks about uh, predicted drug resistance. So here are some characteristic variants, uh, um, uh, RPOB, SER, 450 LEU. Um, and this is the percentage of reads in which that was uh, confirmed. Um, and so we know refrain percent resistance is uh, largely associated with uh, mutations in RPOB gene, uh, isoniazid resistance. We have here a um, change in the CAT G gene and so on and so forth. So uh, unfortunately, this is showing that this sample is predicting resistance against all the first line um, tuberculosis drugs and it's classified as multi-drug resistant. Uh, and then there are variants in other positions which uh, TB profiler did not associate with resistance. Now, before we finish off this analysis, I just want to look at a detail here 
in uh, the VCF. So when we use a snippy with a GenBank reference to create the VCF, then all of the gene names have a prefix gene um, inserted in front of them. Now the tool which I'm going to use next uh, does not handle that prefix very well. So I'm going to use the set tool or text replacement to uh, remove those prefixes from um, the VCF. So my set program is simply take gene, remove it across the entire line, and I'm going to run it on the output of TB variant filter. Execute. Now that I've got filtered VCF and uh, I have the output from um, running TB profiler, I can use the TB variant report tool, which uh, uses the Combat TB Explorer database and the data we've generated thus far to produce a, a nice to read report on variants that we found within our sample. So my output is the JSON the, in the second option here, the drug distance report. I'm going to use the JSON output from TB Profiler and I'm going to use the text transformation um, on the VCF as an input. Um, and then I'm not going to I'm going to filter out some of these uh, variants between in the antigenic regions because the annotation sometimes shows us uh, that a variant is antigenic when it actually is in a gene. Anyway, it's just um, a SNP EFF gives us multiple reports for the same variant. Um, just going to have a look at the advanced options, which database to use. We will use the one back at Sanby. Okay, so that is waiting for text transformation with said to complete running. A later version of the TB variant report tool might not need this step. So now my said has finished running. If I look here, I still see the same variant report, but now with the RV locus numbers rather than gene underscore, etc. I'm going to just look, this is sample 0042, and I'm going to just change the name here to variants. So that this is a meaningful name in my history rather than what it was before. And now we can see that TB variant report has also finished running. Now this uses the Combat TB Explorer database to um, annotate the variants, but that database is currently running on a server in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, it is an open source project though, so you can actually run uh, a local copy of uh, the database if you want to, and if you don't want to rely on our infrastructure. Again, I'm going to make um, the window a bit bigger to see the outputs. Here we can see just the HTML, slightly prettier version of the same drug resistance report that we got from uh, TB Profiler. But here is the interesting output, which is the uh, TB variant report, where instead of looking at VCF, each variant is now annotated in terms of which gene, uh, which protein uh, it is associated with, um, what the expected impact is. So we've got here, um, this is a synonymous variant, so the expected impact is low. No pathways, if they're known that this protein is involved in, and the position in the genome. So if we uh, control click on this position, It'll open a window on Explorer at Sanby, which, sorry, it's taking a little while to load. There it is, which is a JBrowse genome browser. 
and this variant is in this position. This is showing us that it's a synonymous variant in that position at that locus. This is the locus in question. If I right click this and I say search for DNA in, then it will open a window uh, on top which will load the results page for DNA in. Or well, here at the top, there's a link. I can just control click that. And then I get a full page view. And this is what is known about this gene. Uh, it's a DNA polymerase, uh, there's a sequence, and so on and so forth. So um, then if I take this position and I, I control click it, it loads the J browser and it shows specifically where in the genome this variant is happening. So you can look at the genomic context of the variant. Finally, for this tutorial, we might want to see the alignment that underlies our variants. So we can do that within Galaxy using JBrowse. The advantage of JBrowse is that uh, we don't need to download the alignment to our local computers to visualize. The alternative is using IGB and doing the download. So we're going to use the genome from the history. And then we want a new JBrowse interest. Uh, we want this to be the bacterial code. I'm going to refer to the tutorial for these settings. So a new JBrowse instance. And then we want to insert a track group. And I'm going to call this sequence reads. Um, and the first thing that I want on the annotation track is the pylaps from uh, the BAM that is from Snippy. I'm going to leave the uh, auto generate Snip track. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to put this on for new users. And the next annotation track. I want is the variance. No, oh, so that's VCF format. Uh, so this is bam. Then we have the variance, and we're going to use the VCF variance, the most uh, recent one in our history. And we're also going to put this on for new users. And Finally, I'm going to insert a new annotation track group and I'm going to insert the annotation track for mycobacterium tuberculosis TFF uh, annotation. And then I want that uh, to be a canvas feature that's in uh, the track type. Uh, that is in a canvas feature and style.label. I'm just going to call that product and style.descriptor. I'm going to also call that product and then I'm going to say that this should be um, on for new users. So execute. And now it will go and build JBrowse for us. This is somewhat of a time consuming process. Okay, our JBrowse has completed. So let's have a look. Again, I'm going to hide the side bars here. Despite what I asked for, it is um, not showing the annotation when I first load. So I'm just going to have a look, look for a variant of interest. 
Let me see if variance. It looks like there's something interesting around. In this position on the chromosome. So let's load, let's zoom into there. And here is the deletion that we heard about. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to give us a bit more context. And there is the BAM alignment. And there definitely appears to be some kind of a gap going on here, which Freebase has classified as a deletion. I'm going to zoom out a little bit further. And a little bit further so that I can see the read context. And here we see the reads, uh, paired end reads around this part of the genome. Zoom out quite a bit further. And I'm now going to hide the actual uh, read track so I can just see the coverage plot and we can see a dip in the coverage over there. Um, let's take another example. So this is the cat G mutation that we are interested in for drug resistance. So I'm going to have a look here in the a report from DB variant report. And search for cat G. It's not showing it has. Uh, this is the problem of the annotation using all three numbers. So cat G, you must just remember what is the RV number for it. This is RV 1908C. And so that shows us that the variant is at this position in the genome. And I will go back to my JBrowse. Look at that position and now zoom out some. And there we can see very clear evidence that there is a variant at that position, which is the one associated with drug resistance. That brings me to the end of the tutorial on uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, variant calling and analysis with Galaxy. Uh, look at the end of the tutorial for some examples of uh, samples that are not as straightforward to analyze. Um, it is always useful to know what kind of uh, problems you can encounter in sequencing and bioinformatics. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.